Hi, I'm Momika and today I'm going to talk about Archetypes Part 2 where I channeled Yeshua to answer some of my questions on Archetype. Now, I am a metaphysical nerd, so I absolutely love digging into those information. So in this video, we are going to find out what exactly archetypes are in terms of the universal locations because most often the beings I channel will be using the reference of human body to explain the structures of the universe. Because last year, the Nomura Lemurians often mentioned that if you understand your body, you will understand the universe because you are created in the image of God. So the way your body is structured is the same way the universe is structured. So the more you understand yourself, the more you're going to understand the universe. Before I go into the main channeling video, those of you watched the part one of archetypes the link is given in the description if you haven't you can find out your archetypes using chat gpt i use chat gpt very heavily for divination self-coaching and many other self-mastery exercises that i often practice so here's what you can enter into a chat gpt prompt type in in chat gpt there are more than eight archetypes that Carl Jung had spoken about and probably there are billions. So if I give you some information about myself, will you be able to determine my archetype? So ChatGPT is going to respond yes. And then you are going to ask what information do you need from me in order to determine my archetype? So ChatGPT will ask you six to eight questions. Now, I would suggest copy those questions in a notepad or a doc and answer like write down the answer to each one of those questions in as much detail as possible. Share your wins, share your setbacks, especially the challenges and not just like in the recent times. Mention what, do a brief recap of your life in the last one or three years. Because the more information you give to ChatGPT, the more accurately it's going to be able to identify your archetypes. I entered my life in the last three years because that is when I transitioned from my corporate career into spirituality. And it gave me my archetypes. I was actually surprised to find the alchemist in the list. I didn't expect. And there are certain ones that I already knew I am. It, I think it forgot to mention the wounded healer or I have to check it again. In this manner, chat GPT will also mention all the archetypes you are currently living. There will be many archetypes. So this is a fun exercise. You can try it out on your own. So now coming back to the main video, I recorded it on a different day. The same day I recorded part one of that video. So the first part of the video would be about explaining exactly what the questions are that I'm going to ask Yeshua and those of you who have not been following all my videos you may not have some backgrounds or may not have the depth of understanding that I had shared in those so I will be breaking down the questions and explaining what these questions even mean the second part is the channeling where Yeshua is going to answer the question I hope you enjoy and I'm going to now switch to that day's record To give you some idea what I mean by these questions, you need to have some context where these are coming from. For example, the first question, are these archetypes corresponding to the organ reference in God's body? So there is, uh, I think, two or three videos where I channel Lucifer and Archangel Michael, where they talk about you moving through different parallel realities on different parallel earths is a movement across the space. You're moving to different locations, technically jumping from one uh, one earth to the other by matching the vibration of the earth, which matches your state of being. And this is a this and this is happening because the earth is also moving across the solar system, and you are basically jumping to different versions of earth. And in that sense, this locational jumping is allowing you to move through space, and what is space? Space is basically God's body. So basically you are a cell moving through God's body. This is explained in the video Sacred Geometry. Uh, I have shared the link in the description. You can check it out. It's a 
terrific transmission from Archangel Lucifer. Absolutely amazing, mind-blowing. The first question that are these archetypes corresponding to the organ reference in God's body? What I mean by this is since us moving through space is an exploration or movement through God's body, are these archetypes also portions and parts of God's body? Because these archetypes are also fitting into the greater scheme of God's body, right? So how? The organ reference is something that Michael had spoken in his initial videos, I don't remember which one, where he says that there is not enough analogy for him to describe things that happen in a multidimensional or angelic realms because humans don't have any experience of that. So they don't have any human words to describe that experience. So they use analogy of organs. Michael had mentioned that we are cells in the body of greater beings who are again cells within the body of greater beings. Eventually, all these beings are parts and portions of God's body. So if we are cells, then certain collectives are like organs in God's body. So I wanted to know that if these archetypes in that analogical reference are organs in God's body. And if yes, then are we moving from organ to organ? Or is the organ moving through the body? What is happening? So I don't know if it's making sense. The second question is, my assumption is, if these archetypes are organs and we are moving from organ to organ, where are we in terms of God's body? Because these will depend and change, right? A third question is, when we are moving, in which direction are we moving? Is it like we are moving from a smaller archetype to a bigger archetype? like ascending to greater aspects of archetype thus experiencing the greater versions the archetypes of archetypes is that the movement that we are going through or is it like one archetype to the other which are at the same dimensional level another question i had about these archetypes are i want to understand what is the purpose of devolution let, let me channel him I am Yeshua and let me continue the archetypal explanation. As the channel mentioned that there are many, many different kinds of archetypes and I was only using one to explain how archetypes work. Now let us understand how these archetypes are distributed across the universe and what exactly is happening. Allow me to download some information in the channel so that we have an experience, a smooth transmission. So I'm going to use analogy of the human body because it is the closest metaphor that can be used to explain certain things outside of the human dimensions in the higher dimensions that you do not have any human words for. So I have no other option but to use meta metaphors and analogies to give some explanation what is happening in those dimensions and in the greater universe. So understand that the physical reality of planets, sun, moon, and other star constellations that you know of is only the physical aspect of source. The source doesn't only exist in the physical dimension. Source also exists in other dimensions that humans do not have experience of. So let me attempt to bring together all of this in a way that is cohesive for you to understand. Let's start with what you already know, which is a physical dimension. So think of the movement of your planets and solar system across the galaxy and the galaxy moving across the universe as a movement of God experiencing growth in different stages of life of God. Just like you experience different stages of life, you similarly God also experiences different stages of life. And in that sense, God 
can choose to experience the nascent childhood state, go to the full adulthood, and then want to experience a different aspect of it. Hence, it might go through the process of resetting or going back to zero and starting afresh all over from childhood to maturation of a different theme or from a different aspect of it. And this happens in cycles. So this has close connection to the structure of how the universe is for your universe. And let's stick to only your universe is form of a torus, T-O-R-U-S, which is donut shape. So God is going through the childhood to maturity stage in cycles, which is across the cross section of the donut. God is moving in circular fashion across the donut, which is a torus, which has no end or beginning, and this cycle continues. But this cycle is not just happening in the physical level. It is also happening multidimensionally in different dimensions simultaneously. So what you know as the torus or the donut doesn't exist in the physical sense, but also in multidimensional and all tied together in one coherent way. So the movement of galaxies and stars is in sync with God's experience of itself because the movement of all things that exist, let's just say physically for now, I'm not going into the non-physical existence, just for simplicity's sake, everything that exists physically is also going through the same motions as God as a whole being is experiencing. So God is experiencing itself by moving through itself. Let that sink in. So if you think of God's body as a torus-shaped, a donut-shaped body, God is not having the experience of its own entire self. Just as a whole, God is experiencing different stages of developments of it simultaneously at a different dimensional level but at the lower levels, like the physical level, there are also many different kinds of entities or beings who many humans may refer to God, but there are different hierarchies of God, so as to speak. Gods expand in different dimensions based on how evolved that version of God is. So there are different versions of God as well in physical and non-physical level. So now that you understand God's body and how you are moving in cycles across this God's body and experiencing who it is by being who it is and also further expanding and growing and becoming more aware of the other aspects of you that you did not even know existed. In this process, you are moving across God's body. Now think, now I'm going to use analogies of human body. Now think of you observing yourself in the mirror say for example you can have a total glance at the, at your whole being at one shot from a distance right so the further you are away from the mirror the easier for you it is to see yourself in one glimpse the whole self so imagine this moving further away from yourself as god existing in higher dimension which is looking at itself from a different distance to see, to get a whole snapshot of its whole self all at once. This is what I refer to as experiencing all portions of it simultaneously and knowing who it is in one snapshot. That is one aspect of God seeing itself from a distance. When I use the word distance, I mean a different dimension because there is no physical space in reality. And using human terms to give you an idea, to draw metaphors and analogies to give you an idea how God is experiencing itself. But the closer you get to the mirror, then it becomes very difficult for you to focus on the entire snapshot of you at one glance because you are moving closer. Hence, your focus comes closer to certain parts of your body. Depends on how close you are to the mirror. 
So if you are very close with your nose touching to the mirror, what you will experience are your eyes and nose. You will see only your eyes and nose. If you step a little bit further, maybe you will see your face. And in order to see yourself fully, you have to move your head up and down. And even then, you can only see one part at a time. First the face, then the throat, then the chest, and then everything below, one after the other. It's like you have a zone of focus when you're moving your eyes up and down, when the distance between you and the mirror are very close. And the further you move, the greater your chance or possibility of seeing yourself as a whole. So now that you understand the concept of distance and zooming in and zooming out of focus, I'm going to use this metaphor in explaining the experience across different dimensions and archetypes. So when you are in lower dimensions, the experience is similar to that of standing very close to the mirror and only focusing and or being able to experience and see a very small portions of who you are. But is that the whole of you? Is your nose and eyes the whole of you? No. But because you are that dense in your dimensional experience or awareness, you can only see and experience that much. So in lower dimensions, you only experience a fraction of who you are, really. And the moment you move further away, meaning you are ascending to another dimension, a higher dimension, then you see yourself a little bit more than what you saw when you were in a lower dimension. And you are like, oh, I am bigger than what I thought I was. And then you realize that maybe you're bigger than what you're seeing and you would want to see yourself even more. Is this the whole of you? Probably not. There would be more aspects of you. So you would want to step behind and go further, meaning you're stepping into a higher dimension to see yourself at a greater distance so that you can see more of you and in this way, your desire for growth is basically desire to create a distance from yourself and view yourself from a distance, meaning viewing yourself from a higher dimension, because that gives you the whole picture of your own body. The higher the dimension, the bigger the picture. And since there are infinite dimensions, there is no end to you. Now, you are one unique aspect of God and there are infinite versions of individual aspects of source that wants to experience itself. And each aspect of source can grow dimensionally in that sense, further and further away so that it can understand why oh, I am this big, why oh, I also have hands, which you could not see when you were very close. So you are realizing more and more of you, the further or the higher you're going in the dimensions or from the mirror, whatever analogy you use. So this cyclical movement that you are experiencing across the body of the Taurus is multidimensional. So you are going close to the mirror and further away from the mirror, close to the mirror, and further away from the mirror, close to the mirror, further away from the mirror, to get a full idea of experiencing a little bit what you are, and again, seeing yourself from a distance. So for example, if you're moving close to the mirror, you may only want to experience your eyes and nose, and then you're moving away to see, oh, there is a greater part of you. Now I want to experience the ear and the throat. So again, you're closing in, and you're experiencing the ear and thro throat, from a specific dimension that allows you to experience and focus only on the ear and throat and not the rest of the face because you have already experienced it. And again, you move away to see yourself. Oh, I've experienced the ear and throat. Now I want to experience below my body, below my throat. So again, you are going to zoom in to only focus on this experiencing yourself as only this part of you in full detail and once you are satisfied, again, you're going to zoom out and see, okay, so far I have explored from my head till year. And so this is who I am, but I feel there is more. I have a feeling there is more. Now I'm going to go further. And again, so the cyclical movement of God from being the child to maturation and again, resetting and going back to the child and maturation is not happening for only one thing. 
it is happening for different themes. Whichever area of God's body God wants to focus, it's going to experience that at that point of time. So the archetypes are technically different portions of God's body. So when you are zooming in to live this physical life, you have zoomed in to experience very specific themes of a specific archetype. Say, for example, to give the same analogy of human body. Say, in this lifetime, you want to experience the theme of the face archetype. I'm just making up an analogy so that you understand. And in the face, there are so many things. There is eyes, nose, mouth. So which one do you want to experience? These define the sub-themes. So maybe you are born as the eye or the nose or the mouth and you're experiencing the entirety of the portion that you are born with. So eyes will have iris, eyelashes and eyebrows. Nose will have similar features or different features. A mouth will have teeth, tongue, lips and whatnot. So each archetype has its own themes and differentiation from each other using the same analogy. And you are zooming in to experience the sub-themes uh, smaller portions that make up this whole archetype and again you are going to zoom out and decide oh i'm going to experience something else i want to experience the other eye or maybe the nose or maybe the mouth so through your lifetime like not just the physical life but your entire eternity as a spirit being because you cannot be destroyed you are eternal right so you are becoming physical then going to the spirit realm and then you may choose to become physical again or you might choose to experience something else so you are trying to basically explore whatever your interest is at that point of time. So when you're moving across God's body, you are moving through archetypes, different kinds of archetypes. And it could be depending on your preference. As I said, you might be moving to different versions of one archetype, like say this eye and that eye, both are eyes, but they are different because they see differently. So maybe different versions of archetype or you might be moving to a different archetype depending on which direction you are moving in the Taurus. So those are in different dimensions which I cannot explain at this point of time because I need to explain a few more concepts before I go into the choice of how you are choosing different archetypes. But for now, let's just agree that you moving through God's body is experiencing these different archetypes. In other words, you're experiencing different zones in God's body, which could be anything, organs or bones or blood or skin or whatever you wish to experience because just like human body is complex and deep, similarly, God's body is complex and deep. So every set of human and every set of other beings are experiencing different parts of God's body. This is what it means to move from archetype to archetype. When you're moving through the locations in the universe, in the space, you are basically moving through God's body across these archetypes. And once you have reached the end of, locationally speaking, end of an archetype, chances are high you are going to die and move on to a different level. You may also continue to experience a different archetype in your lifetime again. Every human's theme is unique and there are no set rules because God doesn't want to have set rules. God is infinite. It will want to experience infinite variations of whatever it can explore. So whatever you can imagine is possibly true because it exists. Otherwise, you wouldn't have been able to imagine that because imagination is simply tuning into something that already exists and downloading that information. So you cannot imagine something that doesn't exist. Hope this answers your questions around archetypes and I will move on to newer questions.